What's up, everybody? We're back. Yeah. 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 Hey, welcome back to a Metal Hedge journey. Oh, dude, what a long day. We're finally at the end of the, the official launch day of 72 seasons. I hope you guys have had the opportunity to check out all the reaction videos that we've done. We've done a reaction video for every song on the album. I know Adrian hasn't watched them yet. Uh, we've done a reaction for every uh, song going all the way back to Lux Eterna. That's the very first video you'll find on this channel. So, hey, if you're here now and you haven't checked them out, go back and check them all out. That's a lot of fun. Good times. Uh, I was going to say great oldies, but it's actually new. So, what do you know about it? Uh, but, hey, we're here to talk about just kind of like our first pass-through review of 72 Seasons. I think we've all had the opportunity to listen to this album at least a couple of times today. And uh, we wanted to kind of get out here and just kind of give some first blush um you know thoughts and how we felt about the album and then i think maybe we'll revisit this thing like three or six months down the line and you know see if our feelings still you know are, are still the same or are we just like hyped up because it's brand new right so yeah i think that's the thought here so let's do uh you know as we normally do on some of these album reviews just do a quick history and then uh we'll get right into the metal rundown so album obviously 72 seasons metallica formed in 1981 it's an american thrash metal band from san francisco california the band was originally formed by James Hetfield and Lars Ulrich. The current lineup features Kirk Hammett and Rob Trujillo, as well as the other guys, obviously. Uh, Metallica have released now 11 studio albums. Uh, I didn't update this part of it, so I apologize. They now have uh, seven, 11 studio albums. They've won nine Grammys, sold over 125 million records, and were inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2009. I should have proofread that first. I'm not a professional. 72 Seasons is the band's 11th studio album. The album features Hetfield on guitars, All Work on drums, Hammond on leads, and uh, Rob Trujillo on bass. This is actually the first Metallica album that we've reviewed on here that actually has uh, Rob on it, so that's pretty cool. Um, the album produced four singles, uh, Lux Eterna, Screaming Suicide, If Darkness Had a Son, and uh, 72 Seasons. All right. So let's hit the metal rundown here. Let's jump right into uh, musicianship. Adrian, why don't you start us off? All right, so I'm going to say something that I just never thought I would because it's just, it's rarely part of my, uh, uh, you know, part of something I'm actually listening to and praising. But I think James Hetfield's vocals and, you know, lyrics, I think they were the star of this in, of this whole show. Um, man, like, uh, you know, it's almost, I know Kirk just had his uh, his solo album, but this album almost felt like it was James james's james's is james's uh you know it, it was like the james hetfield album right we're, we're all professionals and, yeah yeah um anyway yeah like i i thought the vocals were were fantastic in this album they i i really did um i think there's as far as guitars go i think there's some interesting riffs along with some you know just recycled crap that it's like whatever kind of some there, there's just as much good shit as there is you know, kind of stock, throwaway shit, which is fine. Um, and I'm glad that Rob Trujillo got to shine a few times. Uh, I was glad to hear that. I'm glad you could hear him in the mix, and we'll get into that in a bit. Um, yeah. I especially liked Rob Trujillo uh, in, uh, you know, he got his little, uh, that that awesome bass uh, lead in the, the the last song. Please, I think this is the pronunciation, in, in a Marada. Yeah, yep, that's uh, correct. Which I, which I think that, I think that means in love. But I, I don't know. Uh, when we looked it up earlier, it meant uh, somebody's female lover. Okay. Okay. So essentially, it's that misery is his fe is his lover. Essentially. Mm. Yeah. Or his yeah, female just love. Great, just great shit from Hetfield on the on the vocals and lyrics. Good shit. Yeah. Yeah, I I, I would like to echo that uh, a bit as far as musicality. Yeah, I think this. I think James Hetfield is absolutely the MVP of this record, uh, both for his. Uh, vocals themselves, the vocal melodies, like I, I'm already like looking forward to singing along to a lot of these songs, even though they're they're like mega depressing uh, lyrics uh, <laughs> when you really kind of like look into it. And I I I think uh, I think that's partially why um, James sounds so inspired on this record because I, I think he genuinely is. And I'm not gonna take anything away from Hardwired or Death Magnetic as far as modern Metallica is concerned. But I think with this record, he really comes across as like he really has something to write about this time, and not just you know arbitrary lyrics or whatever. Just yeah, general themes. I, mean, I think Hardwired, right? It was like a lot of world events, you know, what's going on in the world today, kind of thing. And this is very personal. 
Yeah. They're relatable. Yeah. So yeah. I think because of, because, you know, uh, you know, it's been like seven years since Hardwired and James hasn't had exactly the, the best seven years ever, like, uh, you know, better compared to some, but, uh, you know, for him, obviously he's been going through some stuff. So, um, and I think it shows in the lyrics and his performance. I think he puts it all out there as far as the rest of the band, um, you know, we'll get into this later, but I think the singles did not showcase the strength of this album whatsoever for the most part. I think the strength in the and the album lies in the other eight songs for more or less. Uh, I think we really got some some shining moments here on the record. Um, would you know? Would I call this le- this music legendary? No, but it's very good modern Metallica, and that's that's exactly what I expected it to be. Um, so overall, I'm really pleased with the musicianship. I do think I do think Kirk had a few solos on here that were were really good. Um, some of his solos, you know, not so much like like Adrian said, you know, a little bit stock and some of the solos. But I think overall, um, uh, he did he did perform well when the album is taken as a whole. So yeah, what were uh, Adrian? What were Jason's notes since Jason all couldn't right. join us tonight? So he goes, uh, all right. So look. Rob shines in providing much needed level of power to the main riffs on the whole nice. album. James' vocals are top shelf. Good shit, Fossil. All right. All right. Listen, uh, I think you guys read my notes because, I mean, you guys literally covered every single thing that I had. So I won't, uh, I won't, you know, as they say in corporate America, bleed this, uh, bleed this slide here. Um, you know, I agree with everything you guys said. James is absolutely the MVP of this record. Um, not only for the vocals, but also just for the lyrical content. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll, I'll just kind of flex right into entertainment value. Um, you know, obviously with a brand new Metallica record, the first one we've gotten in seven years. And what I, what I think is worth talking about here is, you know, look, as a fan for me, I've been a Metallica fan since I was 11 years old. So this is really only the fifth new release of a Metallica album that I've ever had, that I've like actually been a fan of for to get right so you know entertainment value today incredibly high like this is you know i've only had this a few times in my life so it's super exciting what will the entertainment value of this album be in six months uh you know i i venture to guess and i don't think this is necessarily like a bad thing for them but i just 77 minute long album probably won't be super duper entertaining for me in about six months um, you know, this is something that it's going to be hard for me to get through in one sitting um, in a lot of cases. Right. Uh, so I think entertainment value today couldn't be higher. I'm, I'm super excited about the album. But I think in general, later on down the line, it, it might be a little bit too robust um, for me. Yeah. Like as far as entertainment value goes for me, uh, you know, without repeating everything you said, Josh, I think. I think when it comes to Metallica, and, and this is something I've kind of accepted or realized, whatever word you want to use, I think, you know, part of me wants Metallica to kind of be better at um, editing themselves, right? And kind of bringing their amount of music down to a more digestible amount. But at the same time, they're a band at this point in their career that's only putting out records every six, seven, eight years. Um and so, you know, would I rather them put out eight songs that are more con- like, you know, a more concise album so it's easier for me to digest, but then we don't get four songs that maybe other people really enjoy, right, that, that aren't me? Or would I rather get 12 songs and I just edit it down myself eventually on a playlist, right? So, you know, just like as far as the greater good or whatever you want to call it. I, I think it's I think it's fine that that the album is like you know excessive when it comes to the amount of songs or material that it has because I mean at the end of the day I'm just gonna make you know eventually I'm just gonna you know pick the best songs from the record anyway um, and if I feel like it I can jam the whole thing and and, and really deep dive into it but uh, like you said I really enjoy this record today and. Um, you know, I, I I do expect that to come down a little bit. So my score later will try. I'll try. I'm gonna try to reflect kind of where where I think I will inevitably land on this record. Uh, so I'll read Jason's uh, first here. Um, so he says on entertainment, banger start to finish with two songs that are still fine as background music. All right. So me for entertainment. 
So I think it's interesting how, for me, this album is almost like a reverse of Hardwired. Yep. Um, it, it, it starts off with what I consider a great song. And then we get like, again, it's just me. And I also, I should have prefaced this with, I reserve the right to change my mind on this album. Uh, I ha- It hasn't even been 24 hours, right? Yeah. I, 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 so um, anyway, we get one great song. Then we get four, in my opinion, straight up skippers in a row. Um, and then we get Lux Eterno, which is fucking oh, hold awesome. On. Hold on. Pull back for two seconds here. Four skippers? Four, four piles of shit. That will be edited, edited off. <laughs> More than likely, be edited off my my playlist. Anyway, um, and the worst of that, those being su- uh, screaming suicide. Anyway, we get to Lux Eterna, which is a fucking awesome introduction into the rest of the album, which is fucking great. Um, from that point on, it, to me, the album uh, it starts getting, um, you know, I feel like the solos stop being, you know, just. Like these these stock cheesy fucking so Kirk Hammett solos, and we start getting some real shit, uh, especially towards the end. Um, yeah, uh, and then of course I think uh, it, it has been mentioned. I heard this yesterday, and maybe even the day before that the last three songs were the best, and I, I do think it's those last three songs are very strong album closers for sure. Entertain, it's a good album, man. It's it's I was entertained. Uh, and even there's an 11 minute track. Oh, look, 77 minutes is a tall fucking order, man. Uh, yeah. But I, I think it's. I honestly th- thought it was a, per, a, a breeze to get through. Um, yeah. It's, and there's an it's, 11 de- it's definitible. It's digestible. It's not like Tool's album length, right? Where it's just like it's, why, it's why, a why, why does Tool, why does Tool got to catch strays on this review? Like, like, like. There's no reason for that. This has nothing to do with them. Uh, I was worried about that 11 minute song. Uh, man, that 11 minutes goes by like this. Good shit. Yeah. Um, Dude, and, and our reaction, not to give it away, but I mean, we're sitting there at the end of it thinking there's still like three, four minutes left oh, in the song, song. So we're all like, yeah. when the song like cuts out, we're like leaning forward, like, like I thought, okay, I, what's, what's we all thought next? there was genuinely like three minutes left, and it was over. Yeah. Uh, uh, hey, you, real quick, one thing I thought was cool, and I, I don't know for some reason, I'm like, did they? I was wondering. If, I mean, it's. I'm pretty sure they did it on purpose. Well, a hundred percent, it's on purpose. It was like the oh, nice, and oh man, that was that was, that was the best ones yet, and I thought those were pretty just cool little easter eggs if you want to call yeah, it at um, the end but, well i mean it's it's in several songs yeah there's, they do it a couple of times yeah at, at the end of a couple songs I, I couldn't tell you what they are off the top of my head but i know uh you can tell which one's lars uh which one lars does and which one's james does i can't tell who does the other one honestly mm-hmm. uh but anyway i thought that was pretty neat major why don't you take us into your uh take us into your top tracks all right um so i'm gonna go from uh three two one uh, my third favorite song on this album is Lux Eterna. I, wow. I just, look, look, I love that song. I don't know what to tell you. Dude, it's a great song. I'm with you. I am yeah. not I'm not nearly as high on that song as y'all are. It's probably in my bottom three. I it, look it look, it's I would just like spoiler, it's not in my top three, but that might be the best riff on the album. Mm. Uh number two is In Amorata. Uh that's a great fucking song. Good shit. Uh, did not expect it uh, for I being 11 that, minutes I, I i wanted that halo on fire tier song um you know and, and that's one of the things i told dave was as long as i get like you know three or four fucking absolute bangers i'm gonna be happy with this album and you know i thought this is one of the songs they brought it with uh and number one is gonna be room of mirrors I think that song fucking rules, man. Uh, and it, uh, I love the harmonizing in it, and it just feels like classic. Uh, feels like they care about the the uh, what they're doing in these songs, and of course, the strength of the vocals and uh, lyrics also carry these last two songs. What what is Jason's yeah. top three? Oh, why, Jason's why? top three. Uh, number three, Inamorata. Number two, Room of Mirrors, and number one, Too Far Gone. Yeah. So all right, so the three the three album closers. Yeah, I, uh, yep. mine is pretty close. I'll I'll give an honorable mention here. I'll give two honorable mentions, even though we're not supposed to. Um, uh, I would say "You Must Burn" would be like if my number four. Uh, it's actually it's a really really good song, uh, especially in the car. You could play it loud. I really enjoyed it. Um, an honorable mention. I don't know where it places. It's not in my top three or number four, but I just want to bring it up because this was my least favorite song, and now it's not. So it's it's already moving up. It's Crown of Barbed Wire. 
uh, when I first heard that, when we did the reaction, like we ended we that reaction, negative about it. we ended that reaction, and I was like, ah, guys, I don't, I don't know about that. That might be just a, a bona fide skipper. Um, but I've come around on that song big time. Um, it's 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 somewhere in the middle for me right now, but I just wanted to call it out because it is definitely a grower. Um, but uh, my number three is going to be um, Too Far Gone. Uh, I think that's an excellent song. My number two is Inna Murata. Uh Just absolute epic song. I mean, that from that bridge on is excellent. It, just the melody and like the little bass solo that's in that song is really good. Um, and then Room of Mirrors is my number one. Um, that is... That song actually made like when that when that kicks in at the end and there's like the harmony with the double bass and everything is firing on all four cylinders that actually like hit me like it actually like like kind of made me a little emotional just because to what adrian said it just that took me straight back into classic metallica like first four album metallica um like i don't know what album that would fit in right but like i could easily see that in one of their first five albums um for sure it's a fucking fantastic song yeah uh so for me i'll give you one honorable mention here i got chasing light um it's a good song. I, you know look i'm not saying that it's the fourth best song on the record right now but what i'm saying for me is the lyrical content for me right now um i like it right it, it kind of you know it uh I relate to it right now. So for, for me right now, I love that song, but I don't think it's the fourth best song, but I just really like the, I like the lyrical content. Uh, number three for me, if darkness had a son, uh, look, you guys are too scared to, to, well, I guess Adrian, not Adrian picked a single. Never mind. I was going to, I was going to dog on you, but you know, look, I think this is, this was a really good, uh, song from the set of singles. Um, love the, love the lyrics, love the vocals on it. Uh, number two for me, room of mirrors, uh, you guys already said everything about Room of Mirrors. It's just a classic Metallica song. And uh, number one for me, Adrian, I think you're crazy. Uh, you must burn. I mean, just an absolute booger-eating banger. You know, I mean, just, I, you know, look, it's just a simple song, but it sounds really good. I just, I couldn't, uh, I had a hard time getting there for Inamorata right now. I think I think it's one of those that will grow for me, um, but right now it's just it's not there just yet. Yeah. So let's get let's get into uh, production here. So this is uh, obviously Greg Fiddleman returns for his second album with the band. Um, look, man, like getting a chance to hear this, like you know, on a on a small TV in a car. Uh, on a sound bar and in some headphones, uh, I think this is the best sounding Metallica since Load or Reload uh, in terms of just overall production value. Like, I mean, Rob Rob is not only like audible on this, but man, he is fucking thick on yeah. this album. Yeah. Um, and I mean, I think the vocals are, are done right. The guitars are mixed right. Like it's, you know, they. I, I think they finally let somebody just just do it. Here you go, Greg. Make it sound good, please, because Lars and I can't, you know, the disease of more, right? They just they just want to turn up the drums more, and they want to turn up the guitars more. Yeah. Um, Adrian, what do you think of the production? Uh, I agree with you, Josh. Uh, I think it's great. I don't know. I guess maybe it's the YouTube thing, and I, I admittedly wanted to stay away from jamming these the singles that they've been releasing on Spotify, so... Um, I guess the YouTube mixes Rob does not did not sound good to me, but the way it's actually mixed in the Spotify version that I'm listening to, man, it sounds the mix is really fucking good. Yeah, uh, and uh, I, you know I agree with you. Probably the best since Load and Reload. I mean, I mean honestly, not even probably, definitely. Uh, so yeah, good yeah. shit. Uh, Jason says uh, mix is great, very powerful album feel. Yeah, I I completely agree. I think. Um... It's crazy how the band recorded Black Album, which I think everybody would agree is one of the better sounding, even if you don't like the music, it's one of the better sounding metal albums there is, uh, even to, by today's standards. And Load and Reload sound fantastic as well. But then, like, Metallica has had production problems since then uh, with ev- pretty much every release. Now, Hardwired 
they almost got it right, but I the bass just wasn't quite in the mix for me. Uh, but this album, I agree, gentlemen. I, I think uh, they finally kind of like check every box and uh, they got the production right. I know, I know some people online have seen that they complain that Lars is too high in the mix. Like all I hear is hi hat, and I'm like, I don't, I don't know. I'm not hearing their issues. Um, so it, I kind of see, I kind of see what they mean, but they, I mean, I don't think it's too loud in the mix at all. Yeah, I, I, think, I, I, I hear a lot of snare, man. That's all. I, I mean, that's because that's all Lars knows how to use. So that's that is yeah. a different problem, though. Um, <laughs> but uh, no, I think the audio, I think the production is great overall. All right. Well, let's get into our uh, the legacy here. Let's get into the score for the album. So a couple things. First, obviously, this is day one score. We all reserve the right to uh, let our, you know, our feelings come back down to earth here and give this maybe a more appropriate score somewhere down the line, and we will. Uh, but today, we're going to give you the super hyped up score. Secondly... Our scoring system is a little different. Um, so for a lot of folks, you might see like a seven as being like an average album score out there. Uh, we moved ours to back to a five. So for us, if we give something a five or better, that's various levels of recommending. Obviously, anything below a five and down, various levels of we would urge you never to listen to that. Um, so look, if something on here gets a six, that's not a bad score. That's okay? good. That means we like it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So... Just, just to preface all that, uh, I'll give my score first here. I, I feel like I'll probably be the highest score. Um, so I'll just go ahead and get it out of the way. Uh, I love the album. Again, look, it's seven years of like anxiously awaiting a new release. Um, and only the fifth time in my life I've gotten to have this joyous day in my life, right? So look, take the score for what it is. I think the album is really, really good. Um, you know, we already went through the standouts. For me, I, you know, Dave was mentioning something about his least favorite song earlier. I, you know, I don't, I, I got a hard time landing on my least favorite song on this. I, I, I don't think there's a clear cut, like bad song for me on this record, um, which is something different from Hardwired, which is why I'm going to rate this above Hardwired. I'm going to give this an eight point five. Woof. All right. Um, what you got, Dave? All right. So I am I am also there with you, Josh. Now I don't like I didn't like Hardwired as much uh, as you do, um, but I do agree that this is better than Hardwired uh, on a day one listen, um, and I think that's largely because um, you know Hardwired was only one half good, right? Like I think it falls off a cliff after Halo and Fire. Uh, completely, and then you have spit out the bone to like, like, oh wait, there's still one more good song. Uh, before that's, I, that's what I meant when I said that they're reversed. Yeah, yeah I don't see. I, I, anyway, I, 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 I disagree with you, Adrian. As far as this record's concerned, um, you know, I, I do like the first half of the record of of this record. Uh, I will tell, I will go and tell you my least favorite song right now is sleep, walk my life away or whatever. Mm. Um, I am not a huge fan of that song as of right now. Like every time I've listened to it, it's gotten worse for me. Um, but every other song I'm enjoying, um, my, I'm going to come in with, I'm just verify what I gave hardwired. I'm going to come in, uh, uh, with a 7.9 on this record. All right. Um, so for me, I think this record is really fun. The entertainment value was there. Uh, I'm st you know, still excited to listen to it. Uh, I do think it, it is getting better every time I jam it. Um, I, I'm going to go over real quick the two songs that stick out to me that just, I just, I feel like I hate them. Uh, and Screaming Suicide is one. And another one is Shadow Follows. Uh, I think that's the second song on, on the uh, uh, album. And yeah. just, there are just some, some weird riffs in there that are just like, man, I wish Bob Rock was back. But <laughs> anyway. Um, Shadow Shadow Follows for me, it's like... I think it's Shadows Follow. I'm just... Shadows, Shadow Follow. Okay, maybe. What did I say? You, cop you said what Adrian said. Shadows Follow. Yeah, no, but you said Shadow Follows. When you it doesn't oh, no, matter. Yeah. Let's move on. He, he's right. He's right. Tomato, he's right. tomato. Yeah. Um, 
for me, that song really starts after the first verse, right? Like, I think you get through that first verse, you get into that chorus, and then it feels like the song is more cohesive, like, all the way through after that. But it's like the intro through that first verse feels like, I don't know, it feels wonky. It's not like the second verse is different than the first verse, but I think everything together going into that feels better. I don't know. That's kind of where I've landed on it. I think it's a good song. Got it. Um, uh, so me liking the, this album uh, more and more each time. I've only done it three times. Uh, I do think that this is a grower, not a shower, which I, I feel like is getting thrown around a lot lately by us. But I, hey, look, I, I do think that's what it is. Um, I'm landing on a current 6.5. All right. All right, and what was uh, what was Jason's so, final score? And Jason's final score. Uh, now he he puts something weird here, but uh, his final score is seven point seven. Uh, and then for some reason he notes, uh, Death Magnetic moves to a seven point eight. Uh, now he has some initial thoughts here, real quick. I was worried coming into the album because you never know until you know. But very happy with this album. Can't wait to listen to it a hundred more times to truly let it sink in. Yep. And look, I mean, that's, that's what it is, man. This is just day one, just joy, right? Dave, what do we, uh, what's our average score here? I'm getting there. Give me one second. Give me one second. We're at a 7.6. So that is, that is just an A tier. That is like on the, for us, that is just an A tier record. So nice. look, uh, that's, that's day one. I think, we're, I think we've talked about revisiting this review uh, possibly in six months, right? And then just kind of seeing how seeing how we feel, seeing how how it changes for us. So I think that'll be interesting to see. Um, guys, have any final thoughts on the record? Excited to keep jamming it. Yeah, I'm. 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 I I came in the singles did. You know, I was excited for the singles, but I it did make me like a little bit nervous. But you know, now that we got the whole record, um, man, I think they held back some of the better songs. So I'm happy that they did that. All right. Well, Hey, hope you guys like the uh, video here. Hope you like the album. Uh, you know, I, I, I love the album. I can't wait to keep listening to it. So if you do like the video here, give us a like, give us a subscribe. We're putting out weekly metal content. We got metal reactions, metal reviews, and uh, all kinds of other cool stuff. Uh, thanks for checking us out. In the meantime, live long and prosper. Take it easy, everybody.